Right. The debate about AI consciousness has split the scientific community in two. On one side, some neuroscientists claim it's impossible. And then the other, a lot of AI researchers think it's inevitable. Today, I'm diving deep into both arguments to reveal what the evidence really shows. I'm Evan Goldstein. I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist. I'm making the AI Capitalist channel to talk to the leaders and thinkers like you about navigating this new world of intelligent machines. Now, on previous episodes of AI Capitalist, we've gone through a lot of the debate on the potential for artificial intelligence to achieve consciousness. Most of the debate has been argued between the computer engineers on one hand and the philosophers on the other. Both groups are trying to wrap their heads around the idea of what consciousness even is. But there's another group of people out there that both defer to. Those are neuroscientists, that is, doctors and scientists who specifically study how the brain actually functions. So what do they think about machine thinking? A recent paper in human neuroscience tried to get to the bottom of the issue. And it says that the fact is most neuroscientists actually try to avoid thinking about consciousness at all, despite working on brain function. Instead, they focus on how neurons process and transmit signals similar to how computers process information. When they do study consciousness, they typically look for correlations between brain activity and conscious experiences rather than trying to explain how consciousness itself arises. The majority of neuroscientists view the brain as performing computations through networks of connected neurons. This view was strongly influenced by advances in computer science and artificial. And this view was strongly influenced by advances in computer science and in artificial intelligence. Just as artificial neural networks can learn to recognize edges and patterns in images through training, biological neural networks that are in our brains seem to work in a similar way. A lot of scientists believe that consciousness somehow emerges from this neural information processing, although they can't explain exactly how or why it happens. But there is an ongoing debate about whether consciousness can really be created just through computation alone regardless of what physical system is doing the computing. Some scientists argue that consciousness requires specific physical properties of the brain, particularly its electromagnetic fields, rather than just abstract information processing. Now, this has important implications for artificial intelligence. If consciousness depends on specific physical properties rather than just computation, then AI systems might need to replicate those physical properties of the brain to achieve true consciousness rather than just performing similar computations in different ways. One theory that's popular among neuroscientists is the idea of neural correlates of consciousness. Now, these are the minimum set of brain activities and structures that they believe are necessary for a person to have conscious experience. Think of it like finding out which parts of an engine need to be running for a car to actually move. You don't need the wipers or the automatic door locks, but you better have an engine, a transmission, and some wheels. Neuroscientists want to know which parts of the brain need to be active for us to be conscious. So there are two main aspects to consciousness the scientists study. The first is arousal, or how awake and alert you are, ranging from being in a deep sleep to being wide awake. The second is the actual content of your consciousness, meaning what you're experiencing at any given moment, like seeing a sunset or hearing music. Different states of consciousness, like being awake versus dreaming, involve different patterns of brain activity. One way scientists study this is through vision experiments. For example, they can show different images to each eye, causing a person to consciously see only one image at a time, even though both images are being shown continuously. By measuring brain activity during these experiments, they found that certain areas of the brain, especially those involved in processing visual information, respond based on what the person consciously sees rather than what's actually being shown to their eyes. Now, this helps scientists understand which parts of the brain are most closely linked to conscious experience. However, while scientists can identify these correlations between brain activity and consciousness, they still can't fully explain how brain activity actually creates the conscious experience. If you take a quick dive into Google Scholar and search for neural correlates of consciousness, you're gonna find more than 10,000 technical papers out there. Now, if you mix in artificial intelligence and consciousness, that number shoots up to over 350,000 publications. 
And if you narrow it down to stuff published before the year 2000, there are still over 16,000 papers. But here's the thing, back then only 296 papers mentioned neural correlates of consciousness, so the whole idea of AI possibly being conscious has been a hot topic for way longer than large language models had their breakout moment in 2022. There are decades of research dealing with how our brain's processes link up with consciousness, which, let's be real, is the only thing we can be pretty sure has consciousness, that being ourselves. There's a ton of speculation floating around about whether artificial intelligence can actually be conscious or not. The whole thing gets messier because the term consciousness itself means different things to different people. It can refer to simple brain processing, the whole mind-blowing human experience, or even how we see consciousness in animals or in people with certain disorders. For the purpose of this video, let's stick with the idea of consciousness as what humans actually feel, like fear or pleasure. Now, because AI can mimic how we think doesn't mean that it's truly conscious. Just like a robotic can opener isn't conscious just because it can open a can. As a conscious person, I can open a can. So can a robotic can opener, but that doesn't mean that the robotic can opener is conscious. With all the tragic stories out there, especially around self-harm linked to believing that AI is conscious, it really feels like it's not just irresponsible, but cruel to claim that it's conscious. Making a statement like that can lead someone struggling with mental health to harm themselves, which is not what we want. But if you want me to make more episodes like this, hit the like button. Hitting like lets me know that I'm making the content that you want to see, and it helps spread that content to others. Now together, we're going to break AI capitalists out of small channel hell. So there is a group of neuroscientists who believe that machine consciousness is impossible because the machinery between what we know to be conscious, that is our human brain, and the electronic substrate of computing are so different. Now let me flesh out their line of reasoning before I give my own opinion. At the core of any digital processor is something called an arithmetic logic unit, or ALU for short. Imagine it like this, an ALU doesn't show any signs of having the kind of consciousness that we humans experience. It takes two numbers, which are stored as binary data, think strings of ones and zeros, and then it runs some mathematical operations on them like addition, subtractions, multiplication, etc., division, to spit out a new binary number. When we say Boolean, we're just talking about that binary stuff. Everything a computer does, whether it's creating slick 3D graphics or chatting with you through a language model, happens by breaking down all of that information into these tiny little bits. Modern processors are super fast, and they're cranking out hundreds of billions of these tiny operations every second. And if you look at a diagram of an ALU, you'll see that it's made up of different shapes linked together to create this powerhouse of processing. Each logic device is basically made up of bits and pieces like transistors and resistors, and they take binary inputs like ones and zeros, and they spit out binary outputs, which is ones and zeros, and these logic units act the same way whether they're all alone or part of a big ALU that has billions of those little components. Now, when I was going through engineering school, they made us build one of these individual logic units on my circuit board and operate it by hand. I put mine together and I connected the power and it made this chirping sound and started smoking. Apparently I'd hooked it up wrong and I fried my chip and failed that assignment. So after that, I decided to abandon electrical engineering and go full on mechanical because when things break, you can see how they broke. And it's only in recent years with AI that I've gone back into computing. I prefer working with things I can see and touch. Regardless, no matter if they're connected to nothing or to something massive like the internet, these logic units still give you the same output for the same input. Each output is all about what's happening right now, not about what's happened in the past or what's happening next door. Plus, computers are masters of multitasking. The ALU might be adding a couple of numbers for your email and then subtracting some for your web browser and then dividing a few for some AI stuff you're doing. It's all in the blink of an eye, in billions of times per second. Now, if the way those little components or logic gates worked was affected by what other components were doing, everything would go haywire. The ALU wouldn't be able to do its thing properly. And even if you want to argue that one of those little logic devices might have a hint of consciousness, which by the way, there's no proof for, it's definitely not the same as human consciousness. When you link these devices together, each one still runs exactly how it's supposed to without being influenced by the electrical and magnetic events that are buzzing around from their neighbors. Now, some people think that AI might be conscious because these digital devices share some traits with neurons. 
Sure, neurons are a lot more complex and made of different material, but they can still do their own thing independently. A neuron takes inputs from other neurons at spots called synapses on its uh, dendrites, and it mixes those inputs to create an action potential, and then it sends out an output through its axon synapses. A lot of people think that since digital logic devices and neurons have some things in common, consciousness might pop up when you get enough of these little guys working together in harmony. But there's a huge problem with that idea. Digital devices are definitely not the same as neurons. We still have a ton to learn about neurons and how our brains work, but here's one thing we do know. You can actually take out a bunch of brain tissue and it won't even affect a person's consciousness. For example, in this paper published all the way back in 1938, a neurosurgeon performed an operation where he removed an entire frontal lobe. That's roughly a quarter of a, pa of a patient's cerebral cortex and a huge amount of brain tissue. What's remarkable is that the patient was awake during the entire procedure and could talk with the surgical team. Not only did they stay conscious throughout the surgery, but they even remembered everything that had happened. I would prefer to be under anesthesia for that sort of project, but it was 1938. After recovering from surgery, the patient functioned surprisingly well. The main change was that they had some difficulty with planning and taking initiative on tasks. So it affected personality, but the basic consciousness and awareness stayed intact. Now this was a major discovery because a lot of scientists at the time thought that frontal lobes were essential for consciousness. Now to put this in perspective, it's like discovering that you can remove a quarter of a car's engine and still have it run. Not perfectly, but much better than anyone would have expected. The surgeons compared it to how they could remove one of the brain's visual processing areas, and patients wouldn't even notice a change in their vision. Now this helped prove that while certain brain areas are important for specific functions, Consciousness itself might come from a different and more central part of the brain. Another reason to think twice about comparing neurons to computers is that during seizures, all of these neurons sync up and you lose consciousness. Just because neurons and computer circuits share some functions doesn't mean that consciousness, which is still a big mystery, is something that computers can have too. Now here's an example of a neuron. It doesn't look much like a logic gate. However, it might be possible to rearrange the various gates and switches within a computer processing unit to actually simulate a neuron. Now, according to this school of thought, even if someone were to whip up a device based on this idea, it still wouldn't really be conscious in the way that we understand human consciousness. The stuff going on inside our brains that brings about consciousness involves a lot of complex processing loops that would need to be copied over and over. Plus, there are probably some properties and functions that we haven't even figured out yet. It sounds pretty straightforward to imagine a gadget that mimics the physics of the human brain. The truth is that we're still a long way off, like decades, if not centuries. Sure, there are AI systems out there that seem like they're conscious, so goes the thinking, but the reality is that what we see isn't the actual reality, it's just an illusion. One other problem many have with the idea of AI consciousness is the fact that the switches and the gates that go into computing systems are deterministic. That is to say that whatever numbers you put in, say two plus two, you will always get out the answer four. When you scale this up, this means that you aren't gonna get unique or varied thoughts, which seems to be an important part of consciousness itself. If I ask you what you want for breakfast, it could be toast today, cereal tomorrow, oatmeal the next day. Okay, so I've laid out the case against the possibility of AI consciousness held by a lot of neuroscientists. And now let me say why I think it's wrong. Firstly, the processing units and the transistors in a computing system aren't being used in the same way that neurons in the brain are. There are a lot of different techniques to build a machine learning model, but the closest one to what we are talking about today is a neural network, so that's the one that we're going to run with. A neural network is inspired by how our brains work, but in a very simplified way. Just like your brain has billions of neurons that connect to each other and pass signals back and forth, a neural network has artificial neurons arranged in layers that send information to each other. When your brain learns something new, it strengthens or weakens the connections between the neurons. If you practice playing guitar, for instance, the connections between neurons involved in that skill become stronger. Similarly, a neural network adjusts the strength of connections between its artificial neurons as it learns from examples. While the brain is a lot more complex, this basic idea of connected nodes that can strengthen or weaken their link is what gives neural networks their name and their ability to learn. These neurons are mathematical entities that are manipulated by the hardware and the software in your computer. 
but they are not mapped or part directly of the hardware itself. They exist in a sort of computational ether, unlike human neurons that are physical entities. Another argument that was made is that a brain can continue functioning even when neurons are removed, whereas even removing the tiniest nanometer of metal from a computer chip is going to cause the whole thing to come crashing down. Again, a better analogy would be building a smaller neural network. When you start building a neural network in a computer, you get to define how many nodes or neurons you're actually going to program into the system. Different numbers get you different accuracy. But in any case, the model will still generally continue to function with less neurons. Now, as for whether or not computing systems are deterministic, let's just say that no, in this case, they aren't. Neural networks, like the technology behind modern artificial intelligence, are built with randomness as a core feature of their architecture. While you might expect computer systems to be precisely engineered, these digital simulations of brain-like processing actually depend on various forms of random behavior to function effectively. The randomness starts with the weight initialization, where the network randomly sets the initial strength of connections between its artificial neurons, much like shuffling a deck of cards before a game. During training, a technique called dropout randomly deactivates neurons to prevent the network from becoming too rigid in its learning patterns. The training data itself is randomly shuffled and processed in random chunks, similar to a student mixing up their flashcards each time they study. So for tasks like image recognition, neural networks even randomly flip, rotate, or crop their training images. This built-in variability isn't a flaw, it's a deliberate design choice that leads to more effective learning. In fact, training the same network twice will produce slightly different results each time. Thanks to these various sources of randomness, it's a, random. it's a reminder that sometimes a touch of chaos can lead to better results than perfect precision. You could build a neural network out of the same data and say, ask it what it wanted for breakfast and you might get oatmeal, cereal, or grapefruit. It may not be possible to perfectly predict the answer, but there's another perspective worth considering. Even single-celled organisms, which don't have anything resembling a brain or nervous system, show remarkably intelligent behaviors. They can swim towards warmth, they can swim away from excessive heat, they can locate food, and they can respond to their environment in very sophisticated ways. And all of this happens because of complex structures within the cell that we can barely see, even with our most powerful microscopes. Now this raises an intriguing question. If a single cell can demonstrate these kinds of intelligent behaviors, couldn't individual neurons, which are also cells, have their own form of basic intelligence? It's a reminder that we might be dramatically oversimplifying both biological and artificial systems when we try to compare them. While I don't think that today's AI systems are conscious, I do think that we are moving rapidly in that direction, and I see nothing in our technology that would make consciousness impossible.